chat GBT is your fuck buddy, not your husband. Cool. Cool. I'm glad we agree on that. <laughs> um, you're listening to The Unprofessional Entrepreneur, the podcast where small business owners learn to build their business unprofessionally. It's high time to stop stressing about having perfect content and a conventional way to market your business. I want you to embrace your unprofessional side and learn to succeed on your own terms. I'm your host, Feli, a feel-good marketing mentor and the owner of a content repurposing agency, FDVA. Tune in each Thursday when new episodes air and let's build your business unprofessionally. child i'm excited for this episode because it is a hot topic online right now which doesn't mean that it's it's the most important like trend trending topics never gonna be what dictates my content but i was actually shocked when i pulled my audience what they wanted to hear from me first there was a whole lot of people who were interested in my opinion on ai which like <laughs> thank you I'm gonna take the compliment but also like let's talk about it because i love to talk about marketing and obviously i'm talking about ai from the point of a marketer um <laughs> all i can say is this isn't the first ai you've used if you're looking at chat I can 100% guarantee you've used another form of AI in the past. I saw uh, this guy, his handle is Cause Hacker, um, Jim Carter III. I'm, yeah, I'm not even going to go into how I feel about that name. But um, <laughs> he shares these like threads that are AI platforms you've never heard of or AI platforms you should check out. I can't remember what the thread's called, but I saved a bunch of them the other day because I just wanted to like creep all of them and see what it is. I am totally an open 25 tabs type of person and just snoop, creep, delete um, (laughs) so I can get a full picture and make an opinion. Um, But so he just has... I don't know, I think he was on like thread number 25 or something. And each thread has like four or five different AI platforms. Like I guarantee you've used AI before. And where I was going with all of this is that there was one platform, I can't remember what it was called, but its whole purpose was to remove backgrounds from your photos. And I was like, that's my favorite feature on Canva. (laughs) Like... I use that for everything. So yeah, I've been using AI since the beginning because I removed the background of all my features and that's an AI feature. Like what we consider AI right now, people are thinking of ChatGBT, which is honestly a content generator and it's a type of AI, but it is not the only type of AI. We've seen AI art. We've seen AI videos. And now there are AI platforms that will take literally what my agency does, like take your long form videos and turn them into short form. There's AI platforms that you can type in a description and they'll paint you a picture. There's ones that, um, like I've got some saved on my phone, meetcody.ai, like ChatGBT, but specifically for your business podsqueeze.com generates show notes, timestamps, and newsletters for your podcast. Voicepen.ai, a new audio to transcription to blog generator service. I'm guessing that means you speak, it transcribes it, and then turns it into a blog post. But like, you've used AI, whether it was just Canva's background remover, but Canva also now has the option to type in a description of what you want and they'll generate a photo for you. That's AI. They have like very, um, what's the word? Like, I want to say comprehensive, but it's not that. It's like intuitive. They have intuitive systems, which is pretty fucking contradictory because like intuitive shouldn't be mechanical in my brain. It shouldn't be. But anyways, as a marketer, a content creator, someone who sold blog posts on Fiverr, I was 100% using AI before ChatGPT blew up, before it became the thing that everybody talked about and all these people launched courses about it. That's a thought for another day because you can't be an expert on something that's brand new. But um, I have used all of the content writing AI's free trials because I am a cheap bitch when it comes to things like this. And especially as someone who was selling blog posts on Fiverr, like it's not consistent. I'm not paying $30 a month to write one blog post. Like I'll just find a new one that has a new 
seven day free trial. Um, but so I've used it for subject lines, for blog outlines, for I've even had it write blogs. The, the one thing I will say is every AI I have used, no matter the prompts you put in, no matter the specifications you put in, you'll require heavy editing. And whether that's because you're like me and you're selling content, like, yeah, it requires heavy editing because you can't, in my personal opinion, you can't pass off what AI created as your own. Um, you do need to go through and personalize it and edit it and change the wording and create citations for different things. Um, especially if you're writing multiple blogs for someone, you want to make sure that you have sections where you can backlink to other blogs you've created. But just the tone of voice a lot of the times, like every time that I use AI and I'm like, how can I word this better? And it gives me, or how can I describe? Because this is something I've been doing a lot lately is like how can you describe this complex thought in my brain that's not actually complex, but I can't seem to get it out without making it into a massive paragraph? Like what I just fucking said, how can I describe that shorter? And then AI will give me, just say, how can I summarize something? Like, fuck me, wow. But so when I'm looking for something that's not just how do I summarize, but I, a summary of my thoughts, I always have to add, make it less stiff add more personality, make the tone of voice more bold. And even after AI gives me a second or third iteration on what I originally asked for, I'm still going to edit it. And so I now view AI like video. It's not going away. It's becoming a necessary evil. If you look at it that way, it doesn't have to be evil if you don't want to view it as evil, but it's becoming something that as a business owner, you need to accept. Like video content isn't going anywhere. Reels are showing up on LinkedIn. The dullest platform out there is getting video marketing on it, you know? So it's like, no offense to anyone that loves LinkedIn. I would like to love it. I just don't. But um, AI isn't going to go anywhere. And it's a tool you can use if you'll stop fighting it. Stop fighting it because it's not going to replace us. By us, I mean content creators, marketers. It's not going to replace you. It's not going to replace your job because every time they introduce new robots, like look at the fucking systems at the grocery store where they the self-checkouts, there still has to be someone who stands there and monitors. So it's not going to take away your job. I've seen on Fiverr the gigs blow up of editing your AI content. You can put in your blog post to AI and I will edit the fuck out of it so it's actually a good piece of work and not a piece of shit. Like, you know, so it's 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 something that we need to embrace in my opinion and like whether you use it for everything or whether you use it to just write better subject lines, improve your SEO, um, repurpose your content. But like, really, you should hire my agency, FDVA, to repurpose your content because we'll create way better, way more bold, way more to your tone of voice content than AI ever could. Um, you know, it's just like, it's not going anywhere. That's the point I want to make. That's my opinion on AI, my thoughts on ChatGPT. I know someone who went way too deep into ChatGPT and was like fully spending hours not sleeping talking to this fucking website. No, no thank you. I'm I'm not having conversations with ChatGPT. I'm telling ChatGPT what I need and it's giving it to me. It's like a fuck buddy. Like <laughs> ChatGPT is your fuck buddy, not your husband. Cool. Cool. I'm glad we agree on that. Um, I'm just coming into this episode with a little segue because at the time of recording, mid-May, um, ChatGBT was two years behind on what was actually happening in the world. And as of this morning, I believe, I don't know exactly when it happened, but this morning it was May 19th, um, ChatGBT is officially connected directly to the internet. So they are getting live updates and no longer having information that is two years outdated. So all the more reason to get on it. Um, I did see an interesting conversation saying that ChatGBT doesn't carry your information from conversation to conversation. So just remember that as you're 
having threads. I have different threads for different clients that I've created content for or different threads for even my own content, like if we're doing sales copy versus if I'm looking for blog post help or summarizing my thoughts, like those are all different threads because they're going to take all of those prompts and specifications. But when you start a new thread, they no longer have all of that information on who you are, or at least that's to my understanding. So just to remember to put in your information, your specifications every single time you start a new thread on ChatGBT of what you want, of what your tone of voice is, of how you like to speak. If you have thoughts, if you have questions, if you are also interested in AI, if you have a similar opinion to me, even if you have an completely, what's the word? A completely opposing opinion to me. I want to hear it. I'm curious. Slide into my DMs. Use that voice note thingy in the show notes if you're listening on Spotify to send me back your thoughts and I will totally create an episode and riff off of it. Slide into my DMs at Felly Day or at Unprofessional Entrepreneur on Instagram. Let's shoot the shit. Let's talk about this because I am so curious to hear your opinions. So curious if I'm in this alone in viewing it as the same as email marketing, not email marketing, viewing it as the same as video marketing and how everyone viewed it when TikTok first started blowing up because I was also there. Like, just give it a fucking shot. Stop rejecting new. You sound like a boomer, you know? <laughs> Um, but I'm gonna leave you, love you. Let's leave it here. If you have any episode requests, any thoughts, comments, concerns, dirty remarks, my DMs are open. Please don't be too explicit with your dirty remarks. I turn to erotica for that, not my DMs. But um, I, yeah, I'm gonna keep pumping these episodes out and letting you hear what you want to hear. So I'm here for you. Um, If you do want a closer hand, a one-on-one partnership support with you as you do this thing called business, you can check out the show notes, DM me on Instagram again, um, to check out my one-on-one offer. It is a four-month commitment with me where we are doing this thing called life, aka your business, unprofessionally, and I am here to help you book out your services in a feel-good way by taking you through the feel-good framework. We are going to establish solid marketing foundations because that is what I find so many people are missing, as well as integrating your unique personality into your marketing because that's the other key people are missing. Some people are missing both. Some people are missing half. Some people are missing one. Either way, that's what we solve for in one-on-one. I really hope you can't see, or sorry, see. I really hope you can't hear the fly that is circling my microphone right now. Like how fucking rude. I'm recording a podcast and I got a nice microphone, so it's probably picking the shit up. But um, hopefully that wasn't too annoying. What did I say last week? Stay unprofessional, my dudes. I kind of like that. All right, I'm going to love you, leave you, and stay unprofessional, my dudes. I'll catch you next week with another episode of The Unprofessional Entrepreneur.